Yesterday, 137,000 people escaped from extreme poverty. 200 years ago, no more than 10% of people in the world lived above the line for extreme poverty. Today, more than 90% do. Like in almost every way, life is better for almost everyone today. Fewer than 10% of people on Earth live in absolute poverty, and this year fewer than 6 million children will die. The cycle of poverty is suddenly breaking worldwide. There has never been a moment in history with greater prosperity than the one we live in today. Far from being the cause of our problems, free market capitalism is the only tool we have to end hunger, poverty, and destitution throughout the planet. This according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the three and a half billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. This is fantastic news and of course I applaud it. What could be wrong with this? A simple question. Are things getting better or are they getting worse? In terms of moral quality, I would say that our lives today are much worse than the lives in previous ages because we are responsible for so much harm uh, throughout the developing world, throughout poor parts of the world. And we have so much more moral knowledge, so much more technological capacity to actually eradicate poverty today which wasn't possible before. Poverty in the moment is going up dramatically. And the number of people who suffer, for example, from food insecurity is now 46% higher than it was in 2015. It's gone up each and every year. And we now have about 2.4 billion people suffering from food insecurity. Things in a purely material way have improved relative to our technological, administrative, and economic capacities, poverty today is vastly worse than it's ever been before. The World Bank is the keeper of the poverty numbers, and the World Bank uses a methodology that is deeply flawed to track poverty. The easiest uh, mistake to point out is the one that it uses an extremely low poverty line, and that very low line is making it easier to show progress as people rise above that line. And so even though uh, the incomes of poor people relative to the global consumption basket have improved. They haven't improved relative to what poor people really most need to buy, namely basic foodstuffs. We do not need people to live below one-tenth of the global average income, and yet we have a very large percentage of the world's population living that far below the average income at uh, more than 40% of the world's population. So poverty typically uh, hurts you over a long period of time. You are hungry, you are cold, you're miserable, you're often sick, and finally you die prematurely, maybe at age four, maybe at age 15, maybe at age 45, uh, after a life of struggle with uh, very heartbreaking events in between. Life in poverty is really quite horrible. Certainly that kind of extreme poverty that is still all too common today. Capitalism certainly has increased the global product. It has increased the global product faster than the world population has increased, and so the average income in the world has increased. Capitalism has also brought enormous difficulties, enormous problems in terms of the ecology in particular, and also in terms of the destruction of democratic political processes. So capitalism is a major reason why we have 
huge economic inequalities that percolate into the political sphere and make it possible for super rich individuals, billionaires, hedge funds, big banks and so on to monopolize the political process and basically marginalize the vast majority of the population. The best estimate we have today is that somewhere around 15 to 18 million people annually die from poverty-related causes, and that means it's about uh, a third of all deaths each year are from poverty-related causes. They dwarf anything that we have experienced in the great conflagrations of the 20th century, like the Second World War with its 60 million deaths, or the great famine of Mao Zedong with its 30 million deaths, vastly more people die from poverty. Again, they die avoidably. All we need to do is shift one or two percent of global income in the direction of the poor, and we would avoid this enormous death toll. And of course, these deaths are completely avoidable. Poverty is a choice but not on the part of the victims. It's a choice we all make as a society to decide what is the point of society. Is it things or people? Is it to meet the needs of all, to raise ourselves up collectively and individually, leaving no one behind, or is it to make money? We have the answers, the technology, the science, the food, the housing, all we need what we lack is vision and courage to choose otherwise. Poverty is a function of the way in which social systems are organized, the way we organize our societies and more importantly still the world economy. Different ways of organizing social systems produce different distributions of life prospects, different distributions of chances, education, economic wealth and so on. So the extreme kinds of inequalities that we now have are a foreseeable product of the way we've organized the world. This organization comes about through procedures in which a small group of super rich people have a stranglehold on political decision making and can shape the institutions more or less to their own advantage. So not only is poverty at least as bad as violence, but poverty is also inflicted. So it is through conscious and intentional self-interested decisions by powerful people that other people suffer the indignities of poverty, die prematurely, suffer disease and so on. They are aware and they do it because they just don't care. You know, these people, if you think, of, make a sort of very clean philosophical thought experiment, right? Uh, say to one of these people, here's an ATM, and if you want to withdraw, you can withdraw $20,000 from this ATM, but five children are going to suffer a really miserable death at the other end of the world. If you do that, and nobody will ever know, you're guaranteed nobody will ever know, would you do it? And these people would definitely, definitely do it, and they do it every day. That world poverty is an ongoing harm we inflict seems completely incredible to most citizens of the affluent countries. We call it tragic that the basic human rights of so many remain unfulfilled and are willing to admit that we should do more to help. But it is unthinkable to us that we are actively responsible for this catastrophe. If we were, then we, civilized and sophisticated denizens of the developed countries, would be guilty of the largest crime against humanity ever committed. What could be more preposterous? In order to end poverty, you would have to have concerted action. You would have to have coordination among the rich. They would have to organize it and politically see it through. And it's just not high enough on their agenda for them to do that. Eradication of poverty would require 
that rich people set their self of motivation aside and organize politically to restructure the system in a way that would give them a slightly smaller portion of the global pie. Shifting just one or two percent of global income could end extreme poverty worldwide. But that wouldn't address the system of endless growth and expropriation that made us so damn unequal to begin with. Until we end this mad game of holding down the majority of people to stand above them, we are undeveloped and will remain impoverished in our spirit until we define our success based on the flourishing of all. Don't lose hope. The answers to our other problems lie in the untapped potential of the poor of the world. Let's realize it together. <laughs>